Steve Coates will have the call with Tim Saunders tonight right here on 97.3 ESPN. We'll have the action starting at 9.30. Coatsy, Edmonton is a beautiful Gentlemen. place in December, I hear. Oh, my goodness. I can't begin to tell you. The beach was closed yesterday. So, <laughs> it's a little chilly. Actually, quite frankly, the sun's shining here. Uh, it's I don't know how. It's cold. It's cold. When it's it, like... It's a different type of cold than you get in New Jersey. It just kind of goes right through you. But at least the sun's shining, and there's no snow on the ground. Well, that's good to hear. Um, what is also good to hear is that you're not calling a game that would be potentially a 12th straight loss. So they snapped that 10-game <laughs> losing streak. What were some of the tweaks and changes uh, that aided them to uh, not lose for the 11th straight time the other night? Well, I think the big thing was the, the line changes. I think when Vorchek going down with Fippola, um, uh, was was big. I mean, that, that certainly helped things an awful lot. Um, and then when you have Wheel going down with um, Lawton and Lear, that worked out really good. I thought that was the best forechecking line the whole night. And the only downside of the other night was the Patrick line with Connecting and Weiss, where they were minus two, but everybody else had a heck of a, a night. So I think with, uh, um, with Raffle moving up and playing with Fipula, he benefited from it. Everybody was saying, well, he can't score, he can't score, score at the beginning of the year. Well, he's playing on the fourth line with Lawton and Lear. Lear's a rookie. Lawton's a third-year guy. And it's no offense to them, but you get an opportunity to move up on a different skill level and different guys, then uh, you're going gonna, you're gonna to benefit from it. And I think Raffle certainly did. He could have had a – they said he had a hat trick, but he took two goals back because the uh, NHL uh, officials there didn't do a very good job. But I think those are the big things. I think they changed the forecheck a little bit. They didn't go so as aggressive as uh, they've been in the past where they get caught sending two men in. They put one man in and, and, and stuck two guys back and played a typical road game, quite frankly. If I've been listening to you on the radio, you don't think the officials have been doing a very good job for most of the season. No, and, you know, I don't blame the, <laughs> the, the, the – the, I don't blame Someone, – Someone's listening true. to these games. Someone's listening to these games, Coatsy. And it's us. <laughs> well, and I appreciate that, and I'm, I'm being very honest. When I think the officiating is not very good, and I just don't think that they've given. I think the rule changes and all the different things that are happening in our game just leave the game alone. I mean, it's like somebody came out the other day. The general manager, one general manager, wants to take and make a power play now in overtime, one minute. Oh, wait, just stop! Just stop! I don't think there's been a league that's changed their, their rules more than the National Hockey League, and. And it, it trickles down to the officials. And the officials, I, I think they're put in a position where they don't know what the rules are. And uh, if you can find out what goaltending interference is, please make me your first call because I'd like to find out what it is. Steve Coates with us. Yeah, we'd like to know too, Coates, for sure. Uh, since you're on officiating, I won't leave that topic without asking about the hit on Weeks and the major penalty and the match penalty the guy got because I saw – conversations afterwards where a lot of Flyers guys said, yeah, that was a dirty hit, but then some guys said, I think it was Radko Gouda said, I didn't think it was that bad a hit. Uh, what was your view of it, and did you think the penalty was warranted? Excuse me. We likened it to the hit that um, Provorov had on Sh uh, Marchant, um, where they gave Provorov a penalty for hitting uh, Marchant in the head. Well, Marchant head is at, at elbow height for Provorov. So is it his fault that Marshawn's head's there? And that's the same thing what happened. Weiss had his head down. Hamina came in, tried to be able to get a piece of him. And because of his head's in the wrong spot, they're blaming the wrong people. The people getting hit, you can't put yourself in a position to get hit in that area. You ha your number one duty as a hockey player is to protect yourself. And these guys run around with their heads down and – Dale Weiss put himself in a position to have that happen. Brad Marchant made himself in that position to, to, to be drilled by Provorov. But the p players doing the hitting don't deserve the, the, the penalties. And on top of that, if the players don't know what a penalty is, where are we going to go with this league as far as understanding that, well, this is a hit, that's not a hit. They're not going to have any more hitting anymore. Why would you hit? Steve Coates with us. How about so – could you explain, because you touched on it a little bit, but could you, could you maybe explain what the one two two is and why that was successful for the guys the other night? Well, a classic, there's a lot of different types of forecheck. If you're going to forecheck with two guys, the, the old classic is your first man gets the, the man, 
the second guy follows up, makes sure he get the puck, and you try to always uh, equalize things in the in the offensive zone. It's a very aggressive forecheck. But if you don't, if the second guy goes a little late, and you don't, and you're a little tentative, and you're not very confident, then you can't cause yourself a problem because then you get two guys caught because all the the, uh, the defending team has to do is a reverse to the other defenseman in the corner or wheel the puck and they come out. So that's where you get caught. You have odd man rushes. Uh, and it's tougher and tougher now with no red line. The red line has created all sorts of different problems as far as the game and what, what, what the game's about. But that's a, another argument for another day. So if you go and you, you push one in and he push, pressures the puck and then you have a 2-2. Two, two. So you have the other two forwards standing back and, and that is really basically a preventive way of, of slowing the other team down. And don't be surprised if you see it again tonight because this team can fly. Yeah, I figured you'd see a lot of the things like I don't, if it works, if it's uh, don't broke, if it's not broke, don't fix it. So the lines will probably stay the same. You would expect that we would see. Oh, we know we're probably going to see Elliot again, right? Since they sent Neuvert down and yeah. brought Alex Lyon up. Well, Alex Lyon's up because Neuvert got hurt again. That's it's unbelievable. He gets hurt so much, but uh, so Alex Lyon's going to be the backup tonight, and, and Mark Alt goes in uh, for for uh, Brandon Manning. Uh, Steve Coates is with us here, Flyers in Edmonton. Uh, Pete talked about the line shakeup. Let me ask you, I asked Pete yesterday. He didn't have a good answer for me. I want to hear yours. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you shake up the lines, you start doing things. How long do you keep them like this before? Because it seems that it would be tempting to go back to that top line, which was like third best in the league. Is this a temporary shakeup? How long do you think they kind of just uh, keep that that top line separated? Somehow down the road over time, and I don't know where it started. I don't know where it, like, how it started. But for some reason, we make line combinations the end of the earth. Like, uh, we're, <laughs> no. we're top secret. I thought like, we're that. top secret. Yeah. Go ahead. I, so, like, if, if you go in and said to the coach this morning, we've gone into McClellan this morning in the press conference and said, hey, Excuse me, Todd. Uh, who, are you, who? What's your line tonight? He would say, "I'm not telling you what my lines are," and we it's top secret until the, the warm up. So, so when I say that, it really doesn't make any difference. I don't understand we why we make it top secret, but the number of times that we change the lines during a season, the the combinations of permutations on that is endless. So we had some success with the one line. And there are some lines right now that are having some success in the league. But there's no way in the world they're going to stay like that. Those days are gone. The days of, uh, like, the uh, the Triple Crown line in L.A., the LCB line in Philadelphia. All these different line combinations and line names that were really good at the time. But th- those days are gone. So when you take a look at uh, our club right now, you do it's d- the best to win hockey games. And probably, if anything, uh, if you're looking back at it, Having those three guys and having two centers playing on the line, maybe it's not working in the long run, so you got to change that. So I'm not shocked that it happened. And is it going to come back together? Who knows? But is it going to be happening in January, February, March? Whatever it takes to win on a day-to-day basis, that's the answer. Yeah, and, Coatsy, that was the surprise that a lot of people thought if they were going to juggle things around that they would uh, break up Giroux and Couturier. They did not do that. They moved Voracek down to the second line. It got results. It got dividends. Uh, but were you surprised that they kept the two centers together on that top line? No, not really. I mean, that would be your, you know, there's all sorts of different things you can do. I mean, Scotty Bowman changed lines every shift. <laughs> there was different guys going out. You never knew what was going on. So it doesn't, it's, <laughs> I guess a, just too much thought in a, in, a, in a situation that really doesn't matter if that makes any sense to you. It does. So you played the game. You broadcasted the game for a long time. A losing streak like that. How, how do you describe how the players were, the coaching staff was, the support staff was when that finally snapped? Uh, just that sense of relief of, thank God, we finally got a W. The best answer to that is, if you'd watch the celebration after the win, Jake Borchek had his arms in up like – in, in jubilation, and he likened it that that win to avoid going eleven. He likened it to winning the world championship with the Czech Republic. That's mm. like unbelievable. So that tells you how this team does care, 
And, you know, when you lose like that in the way that they lost, I mean, you can probably hide, highlight some of the defensive mistakes they made in the overtimes. Uh, it just became like a spot in a tie with the last two home games where they just had an atrocious effort. But when when you have things going badly like that, your skates are bad, your sticks are bad, the bus ride's bad, the plane ride's bad, everything is bad. There has to be some reason that we're playing bad. Well, those are all the different reasons. And it takes a group to be able to get together, and, and or you can have all the meetings in the world, but you need things that to, uh, to, to go get a little lucky sometimes and uh, – they got that in Calgary, and then hard work. You got to create your own opportunities. So we'll see if that carries over tonight against Edmonton. Yeah, and maybe the schedule favors them a little bit too. It's like a term paper, Coatsy, where you're like, "Oh my God, I got this big paper I got to write." But they're in Edmonton tonight, in Vancouver tomorrow. Then there's a five-game homestand. So if you take uh, all three or two out of three on this Canadian Western Canada road trip, then you come back home feeling pretty good against yourself. Toronto, Buffalo, Dallas, L.A. Maybe take a couple of. Those. I mean, the, you just break it down in little segments, right? You you minimize the yeah. challenge that's ahead of you. Yeah. I wouldn't even go segments right now. I'd be going period to period just to see how we do. Like, we got that period away. Uh, you know, Elliot's been great in that. We're missing defense again. You're out of veteran again. So now uh, that makes it tough. But then you take a look at Edmonton. They got uh, no Larson, no Sakara back there, and they're really hurting in goal. So that's something to really pay attention to tonight with this uh, this. Young kid in net for the Edmonton Oilers. So they're hurting in goal. Can you quickly explain? I mean, this isn't really a technical hockey question, but where uh, uh, Brian Elliott's moose nickname came from? Somebody asked me that. I didn't know the answer. I don't know the answer to that. Okay. Well, we'll get, make that your assignment between now and the next time that I get to talk to you. Of where did you know moose... what? I didn't know that. <laughs> I didn't know the answer to that, but because of uh, some senior situations, I forgot. <laughs> All right, uh, Coatsy tonight with Tim Saunders right here on 97.3 ESPN, 9.30. Edmonton, Philadelphia looking to make it two in a row. Thanks, Coatsy. You got it, guys.